chairperson of this evening session, Mr. Nino Do, President, NSF, and his esteemed colleagues, the convener of the organizing committee and his team, the senior members of the Naga Students Federation, Honorable Minister, Mr. Wangbo Niumai, Honorable Minister, Mr. Kashim Washum, Honorable MLA, Mr. Lishio Kishing, Honorable MLA, Mr. Ram Moiba, Honorable MLA, Mr. Chang Himlong Banmai, and my friend from Nagaland, Honorable MLA, who has accompanied me, Mr. Joanga Sep. Federating units and support net bodies of the Naga Students Federation, invitees, leaders of the civil societies, the Tangkul community here in Okru, the local organizing committee, dignitaries off and on the dice. I feel honored today this evening, addressing you as a special guest in the capacity of as a former president of the Naga Student Federation, as well as today as an elected member. In fact, it is a proud moment for me to be here in this very place in o at Okru and a joyful moment to see many of my senior colleagues still very active to keep the NSF and the Naga family alive. It is also interesting and significant in a sense that way back in 1993, the NSF conference was held here in Okru. Then, today is 30th general conference of the NSF. After 30 years, it is coming back to Okru again. <laughs> Nagas are moving forward, and it has a lot of significance. Friends and my dear Naga citizens, this evening, I would like us to take back, take us back to the memory land, where we will refresh our memory in terms of reflecting our history and also to look for our future. This is only an introductory session. I know for sure people are tired, traveling, all the length and breadth of the Naga homeland, a very long, artist journey. And therefore, you would not feel like listening a very long lecture. I will only speak for a few minutes, which I hope you will bear with me. We will go back to the memory land. I will dwell on the 1947. And 1947, a year, which is so significant for the Nagas and also for the Indians. When, on the 19th of July, 1947, the Naga delegation met Mahatma Gandhi, the father of the Indian nation. Mahatma Gandhi, in no uncertain term, told the Naga, Naga delegation that Nagas have every right to be independent. We did not want to live under the domination of the British. And now they are leaving us.
I want you to feel that India is yours. I feel that Naga Hills are mine in as much as they are yours. But if you say that they are not mine, then the matter must stop there. He went on to say, he went on to say that I do not, I, I believe in the brotherhood of men, but I do not believe in force, forced union. If you do not wish to join the Indian Union, no one, nobody should force you to do that. That is what Mahatma Gandhi, the father of the Indian nation, assured, told to our Naga delegation. Now how the conversation went on? The Naga delegation, I would like to remind our young friends, told Mahatma Gandhi that at that point of time, Sri Gopalachare was the governor general, governor, administrating the upper part of the Naga homeland. So he, the, the, the delegation told to Mahatma Gandhi that Gopalacharya is threatening us. So Mahatma Gandhi replied, he cannot do that. Before he shoot any Naga, I will come there and ask, he asked him to shoot me. That was the conversation between the Naga delegation and Mahatma Gandhi, the father of the Indian nation. Now, basing on that, since Nagas, by nature, we do things in good faith, our Histories are passed on through oral tradition by words of mouth. And therefore, after interacting with the father of the Indian nation, Naga delegation came home and declared Naga independence on the 14th of August, 1947. That was the year when India also declared its independence on the 15th of August, 1947. So we declared one day ahead of Indian independence. That was the year when Naga Student Federation was formed, 1947. And therefore, uh, 1947 is a significant year for both India as well as the Nagas. I wish to remind, well, reminding the Naga people, I also would like to remind the government of India that it is a significant year for both the Nagas as well as the Indians. We have to go back to the roots. So that when our roots are firm, our foundation is also firm. And when our foundation is firm, no force on earth, nothing, no force on earth can shake us, can divide us, can destroy us, can finish us. And today we can proudly claim that this generation, my generation, your generation, our generation, is proud to have inherited a history which is very strong in its foundation. A history which cannot be disputed.
how it all came about that our leaders would have to declare Naga independence on the 14th of August, 1947. We will go back to 1918, the formation of the Naga Club and the submission of the memorandum to the Simon Commission in 1929 by the Naga Club. And if you go through the last line of the memorandum that they have submitted, they have stated that we represent the entire Nagas that has to be interpreted in that manner. Because they have mentioned Kata Nagas, which we have to construe that Nagas out beyond boundaries. This is what the conference team says. They have represented Nagas beyond boundaries. And therefore, in the memorandum which was submitted to the Simon Commission, it was very, very, very categorically mentioned that leave us as like that of the ancient times, ancient days. That is what the Naga Club said. So the meaning to say that we were independent much, much before the advent of the British, and even before India becoming an independent nation, we were already ahead of them declaring our Naga independent. And today, with that kind of inheritance that we have, an inheritor of a very strong foundation of our history, we have nothing to fear to speak, to write on the Naga political rights. Whether you are an elected member or you are a non-elected member, you are a social activist or a government servant, this right has been already embedded in our history, which cannot be denied. And therefore, this is what I would like to impress upon our young generation, the students, community, that unless we know our roots, unless we know our foundation, our, advers our adversaries will be always looking for you to defeat you. And therefore, it is imperative that we know from where we have come so that we will know where we are standing and we will also know where we are heading. This is the message that I would like to put across in this conference, that the theme that we have chosen, Solidarity Beyond Borders, it is befitting, and this is where the NSF have been interviewing all through these years, the past 75, 6, 7 years back. And today, with the, the strong foundation of history that at hand with us. The other communities, our adversaries, are so jealous actually of our history. But it is unfortunate that amongst the Naga family, we are unable, unable to harness, cultivate, strengthen among ourselves. This is where the young generation leaders, we have to retrospect, introspect ourselves, and take the Naga people forward. When we talk about Naga integration, integration, bringing together of the Naga homeland, bringing together of the Naga people across the length and breadth of the Naga homeland, Sometimes our, people, our neighboring communities become critical. Let us remind them that our issue, our foundation, our history was much, much before they developed a sense, a sense in such a way that there is a Naga family where they wish to live together, where there is a history that 
there is a compact Naga family, and this is a group of family that has been striving, longing for a nation of its own in the committee of the nations. As far as the state of Manipur is concerned, it came into being only on the 21st of January, 1972. I hope I'm correct. As far as the state of Arunachal Pradesh is concerned, it came, on the, it came into being only on the 20th of February, 1987. Now, therefore, when we say that our people, our land should be integrated, the state which has come into being recently should not have an opinion, forget about right, should not have an opinion that Nagas Nagas have no right to get themselves integrated. I'm saying that they should not have an opinion even. Because our history was much, much before all these so-called states were formed. And therefore, unless we understand the historical aspect of our Naga history, the political aspect of our Naga history, we will become a lost people. Today, why Naga family is strong? Because our elders at the right time have taken the right decisions. A foundation which is so strong for all of us to carry on our issue, our struggle for a unified, independent Naga homeland. Therefore, it is I feel it imperative that Nagas, wherever we are, it is time we learn, talk correctly of the Naga history, Naga political history. We are a people having political conscience. And that is the reason why amongst the communities especially in the northeastern states, northeastern region. We are strong community in every sense of the term than the rest of our other neighboring communities. In fact, if our other communities have come up asserting their rights, it is we, we can proudly claim that they got inspiration from the Naga people. And therefore, instead of being critical to us, instead of crumbling on the Naga pursuit of the Naga issue, they should be grateful to us. And taking advantage of this platform, this conference, I also would like to send a message to our neighboring communities living together to understand the Naga history to cooperate with us, and together we will find a solution, an honorable solution, which will be not only advantage for the Naga people, but for the entire Northeastern communities, as well as the government of India. With this message, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me, and I wish the government, I mean the, the conference, a grand success. Thank you. Kognali.